This is Nick Baisley from FilmSnobbery.com. I'm here at the Orlando Film Festival at the lovely Plaza Cinema Cafe, and I'm here actually at the uh, just after the award ceremony uh, here at the festival, and I'm here right now with award winner John Kaplan. John, uh, what what movie did you win here? And you won Most Inspiring. What's the flick? My film is a feature-length documentary, and uh, it's kind of an unusual topic. It follows my successful journey through lymphoma treatment. And uh, thank God it had a happy ending, I've got to say. And, and what, I mean, what, what uh, you know, usually that's a personal thing that happens to someone. What prompted you to whip out a camera and, and capture this? And, and, and why would you want to make that, that information public? Well, you know, that's a great question. I'm, I'm actually a professor at the University of Florida. That's my day job. And I typically do not recommend to colleagues or students to do a project about yourself. It can be very self-serving. And in my case, um, I was first misdiagnosed two years ago with kidney cancer. It was supposed to be uh, you know, kidney cancer, uh, uh, the most common type called renal cell carcinoma, found early after three months of recovery that you'd have from any you know, major surgery. I was supposed to get on with life as, as normal. But when I went into the OR, the oncologist, the surgeon, realized right away it was not what they thought. And it turned out to be a combination of three different types of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So much more serious. And um, so I had to start all over again with all new doctors. I became a blood cancer patient. And I did not even think about picking up my camera for the first couple of months. And truthfully, all I could think about was will I be alive to see my kids grow up? You know, my kids at the time were four and two. And um, believe it or not, there's, there's a lot of positive things that can come out of cancer. And one is that the veneer, the very thin veneer over your life is suddenly stripped away. And even though it's, it's terrifying, it's also very clarifying. So one night, um, my wife brought a movie home from Blockbuster and you may know the film, it's called I'm Not There, it's about Bob Dylan's life, and it's very abstract, uh, with incredible visuals. It's a very is, that the, is that the one where there's different people playing Bob Dylan? Oh, yeah. or is that you know, Imagine Bob Dylan um, played by an eight-year-old African-American boy in, in the South, you know, having to do with the theme of blues in the South. So it's very dense film, you know, very metaphorical, but the visuals were incredible. So the morning after we watched that film, and I was you know, right in the middle of wrestling with, oh, I don't have a simple cancer, I have a more complicated cancer, and I don't know whether I will live or not. So um, as, truthfully, as a way to cope with my fear, you know, the next morning, I took a picture of myself in my bathroom mirror. And I'm not the kind of uh, you know, visual communicator that has spent time photographing myself. But it was, it was like, um, it was actually very freeing, and so, it, it's like the floodgates opened, and I began several months of doing photography and video of myself, really seat of the pants. You know, I didn't want to have a film crew with me because I had to be in the moment. I had to be more about um, listening to my doctors and, and, you know, hoping, praying I could survive this thing and go into remission. So I wanted the, you know, the, the filming to be very low tech, and so I worked with a very small HD camera, Canon, uh, I call it a beer can camera, it was an HD 11, I think it was called. And I was one of the first people in the country to get uh, the Canon 5D Mark II, which does some very nice HD video as well. So I was fortunate that, you know, technology helped me, thank God for autofocus, because I, I photographed and did vi video of myself through the process. At the same time, trying to be true to, to being a, a good patient. Now, you had mentioned that yeah. making a project about yourself is something you advise your students against initially. Now, did, did going through this whole process, um, did going through your, this process inform at all or change the way that you teach, um, whether it be that, le that particular lesson or just filmmaking in general, uh, because you're now seeing things a, a little bit differently? I think so. I mean, I have, to, I have to be honest. I started this project as a way to have an outlet to cope with my fear. And thankfully, I found, I found it. You know, some people write a journal. I decided to make a film. And I had a vision from the beginning that somehow I would put this thing together. I started with a zero budget. And um, I found some music by incredibly famous musicians. And people, you know, people far wiser than me said, do not even go there. Do not even try to license music from people like, you know, Chris Martin of Coldplay or Michael Stipe of R.E.M. or 
Will I am on the Black Eyed Peas. But you know, I think if you have a vision and you have a will, there's a way to get it done. So how does that relate to my students? You know, I try to teach them that if you're committed to storytelling and you're committed to truth and you have a vision and a passion for what you want to do, you'll, you'll find a way to accomplish it and get people to see it. And you know, when it comes to film, as you well know, it involves funding. So I started with a zero budget and I found people that believed in the project. The post-production work was done with a hope and a prayer that I could pay people back for the hundreds of hours of volunteer time that people committed to me and to my project. And so lo and behold, we were, we, we were able to get a very healthy grant. And my goal has been to give away, to begin with, 10,000 copies of this movie free for cancer patients, their families, anybody touched by cancer. And that's what we're doing right now. Yeah, I meant you when you were up, you were giving your acceptance speech for this award. Well, let's hold up the award so everyone can see it. That's a great, most inspiring, not as I pictured. And and um, you said you had mentioned that there's a website people can go to that if they want a copy of this movie, they can get a copy of this movie. What's the website? The website is notasipictured.org. And anybody touched by cancer, if you've got a friend touched by cancer, a family member. By the way, you know, I, I hate to have to share this fact, but it's true. One in three of us get cancer, and that means virtually every family is affected by it. My entire adult life, I was never sick, and so I took my health for granted. And Of course, I was blindsided by it. So um, anybody touched by cancer in any way can get a free copy. We launched our website this weekend, and um, again, we're going to give away 10,000 copies to start. So notasipicture.org, and uh, we, we've done a lot of focus group testing, and truthfully, the film can, can really help people. It'll give you just a little nugget of courage that this might not be fun, we didn't ask for this, but the film is very upbeat, it's very inspiring, so I'm told, and it can really help people through the process. Well, I want to congratulate you not first off on your award, but I also want to congratulate you on your health. And I want to say thank you for attending the Orlando Film Festival and, uh, and, and also being an educator as well, because I think that, that passing on this, this knowledge, especially knowledge that you gained from doing this, is really important. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.